Fun Facts presents the 1956 Plymouth Fury sedan. It is a 50s classic car and this is considered the early history for the production years 1956 through 1958. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And let's get started now. The Plymouth Fury is a model of automobile that was produced by Plymouth from 1955 until 1989. It was introduced for the 1956 model year as a sub-series of the Plymouth Belvedere, becoming a separate series one level above the contemporary Belvedere for the 1959. The Fury was a full-size car from 1959 until 1961, then a mid-size car from 62 until 64, and again a full-size full size car from 65 through 1974, and again a mid-size car from 1975 through 1978, and from 1975 until 1977, the Fury was sold alongside the full-size Plymouth Grand Fury. In 1978, the B-body Fury was the largest Plymouth, and by 1979, there was no large Plymouth. This product gap was filled in the 1980s with the R-body Grand Fury, followed by the M-Body Fury in 1982. Production of the last V8 RWD Plymouth Fury ended at Lakefront Maine Assembly in Kenosha, Wisconsin on December 23, 1988. And unlike its sibling brand, Dodge Plymouth would not live to see the resurgence of the large V8 rear wheel drive sedans. May they rest in peace. The early history 1956 through 1958. The Fury was a sub series of the Plymouth Belvedere from 56 through 58. It was sold only as a sandstone white two-door hardtop with gold anodized aluminum trim in 1956 and 1957. In 1958, it was only available in buckskin beige with gold anodized aluminum trim. These Furies had special interiors, bumper wing guards, and V8 engines with twin four-barrel carburetors. The 57 and 58 318 cubic inch 5.2 liter engine produced 290 horsepower shared with the Dodge Coronet. The 1957 models were restyled longer, wider, with very large vertical tail fins and a new torsion bar front suspension replacing the previous coil springs. While the new styling boasted sales, quality control suffer, suffered for all Chrysler products as they were brought quickly to market before their design and construction weaknesses could be fully addressed by engineering. The front suspension introduced Chrysler's torsion air, torsion bar suspension shared with all Chrysler products starting in 1957. In 1958, the optional engine was a big block 350 cubic inch 5.7 liter called the Golden Commando with two four barrel carburetors producing 305 horsepower. A 315 horsepower option with fuel injection was available, but the Bendix electronic fuel injection system was recalled by the factory and owners were given a conventional dual four barrel setup. The Golden Commando engine was optional on any Plymouth Plaza, Savoy, 
Belvedere, Suburban, and Fury, and was the dual four barrel, 318 cubic inch, 5.2 liter, dubbed the V800 Dual Fury. Four and two barrel 318s also arrived for 1958 and were simply called the V800s. In 1959, Plymouth introduced the Sport Fury as a top model and the Fury as its second and from the top model to replace the Plymouth Belvedere at the top of the Plymouth lineup. The Fury was now available in four-door sedan, two-door hardtop, and four-door hardtop models, and the Sport Fury as a two-door hardtop and a convertible. The station wagon version of the Fury was the Sport Suburban, which was not marketed as a Fury. The Sport Fury was dropped at the end of 1959, but was reintroduced in mid-1962 and discontinued in 1971. In 1959, the 350 was replaced with a 361 cubic inch 5.92 liter version of the Golden Commando with a two or four barrel carburetor. The dual four barrel version of the small block 318 cubic inch 5.21 liter was also introduced that year. With the four barrel available on this engine through the 1962 model year. The second generation from 1960 to 61, the 60 models were the first year for the unibody construction, the first year for Chrysler's Ram induction system, and the first year for Chrysler's new Slant 6 engine. The original 318 and 383 were available along with a 361, but the 225 cubic inch 3.69 slant 6 produced 145 horsepower at 4,000 rpm. The 383 was rated at 330 horsepower. Uh, I wouldn't be happy with a slant 6. Not really. The styling for the 1960 model year had been formulated in 1957 during the height of a tail fin era but the design fell from fashion. While Chevrolet and Ford sales increased during 1960, Plymouth barely continued its 1959 volume. Tail fins were removed for the 1961 model year. The Fury remained Plymouth's leading sales volume model through the early 1960s. The third generation from 1962 to 64. The 1962 Fury emerged as a downsized model riding on the new Chrysler B body uniform platform. The product of Chrysler Corporation embroiled in multiple corporate controversies at that time. Sales of the new model were slow prompting the reintroduction of the Sport Fury trim package, offered as a hardtop coupe or a convertible. The 1962 range included a Fury four-door station wagon, the wagon equip equivalent of the Fury having previously been marketed as the Plymouth Sport Suburban. Chrysler Corporation began to restyle and enlarge the Plymouths and Dodges, which improved sales in 1963 and 64. The 64 models saw an improvement in sales, especially in the two-door hardtop, which featured a new slanted roofline. Engine choices remained the same throughout this three-year cycle. Okay, well, I'll leave a link below the video for this Wikipedia article. Um, we'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. 
because it really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all of the cars from the 50s and 60s, the muscle cars, the concept cars. We'll be doing car shows and autoramas and hot rods, custom cars, supercars, hybrid cars, a little bit of everything for everybody. We hope to see you when we upload our next video. And always, 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 take good care.